this is the way it was up close on June 5th, 1944, as the greatest armada ever assembled left southern England bound for the coast of France. The plan was officially called Operation Overlord, but history remembers it as D-Day. As the ships head towards France, the men, many of whom will die, take care of some last-minute chores. This Hitler impersonator took the men's mind off the task at hand, at least for a few moments. Life vests are mandatory for everyone, even this little guy. But the time for fun ends as the coast of France comes into view. The next day on the morning of June 6th, a tremendous barrage strikes Hitler's fortifications at Normandy, softening it up for the men who will soon hit the beaches. There would be more than 10,000 casualties before this day was over. The night before, 23,000 airborne troops parachuted behind enemy lines to secure the flanks of the landings. At Gold, Juneau, Sword, Utah, and Omaha beaches, 130,000 Allied troops would now attack five heavily defended areas of Hitler's invulnerable Atlantic Wall but the Allies would secure a beachhead in France. Here are some of the German defenses that had to be overcome. Now the huge amount of men and supplies that were needed to successfully continue the invasion of France could be landed. Endless tons of supplies were landed on the beaches of Normandy on that first day. With the individual landing secured, the Allies' next step was to consolidate their five beachheads before the Germans could react. It was imperative to keep the men moving up from the beaches and the supplies rolling in. These are the first of many German prisoners the Allies would take on their drive east towards Paris. Speed was of the essence. It was vital to keep the Germans reeling and not allow them to counterattack. Control of the skies was a key ingredient in keeping the Germans off balance. Allied air superiority cost many German soldiers their lives. The Allies had also taken their share of casualties as they linked the beachheads. Now you are with the Allies as they start their arduous drive toward Paris through the devastated French countryside. Although the buildings were destroyed, the will of the French was not as they came out to greet the Allied armies. While moving through France, the Allies realized the ultimate enemy was still on the other side of the Rhine. German prisoners filled the streets as the Allies fought on toward Paris. Hitler's dreams of a thousand-year Reich were fading fast.
Again and again, the Allies forced the Germans back. With more than a million soldiers in France by July 1st, men were able to rotate to the rear for a few days to catch their breath and catch up on their mail. Allied military leaders, including American General Omar Bradley, British General Bernard Montgomery, and General George Patton with his trademark pearl handle revolvers, enjoy a moment of levity. But for the men on the front lines, there was little reason to smile as the Germans put up an intense fight throughout their withdrawal, leaving cities in rubble. By the middle of August, more than 10,000 Germans had been killed and 50,000 more captured. These prisoners seem relieved that their war is over. For many, it was their one chance to get out of the war without being labeled a deserter. These prisoners, and thousands more like them, were eventually shipped to POW camps in England and the United States, where they had the best of a bad war. They would return home alive and well-fed. As each town was freed, the French came out to greet their liberators. And as the summer wore on, there were more and more of the liberators on French soil heading inexorably toward Paris. It appeared the question was not if Paris would be liberated, but who would get there first, the English, Americans, or French. The Germans did not retreat without a fight, exacting a heavy toll for every mile won by the Allies. More than 240,000 German troops were able to escape back across the Seine. They blew up the bridges behind them, slowing the Allies slightly, until engineers could put up temporary bridges to keep the flow of troops moving forward. Finally, Paris was in sight. The German commander, realizing the fight for France had been lost, ignored Hitler's orders to raise the city. The French flowed into the streets to welcome their liberators. Men, women, children, all deliriously happy that their nightmare under Nazi rule had finally come to an end. No one could contain their emotions, especially American GIs just happy to be alive. Some Nazi snipers, unaware of the German surrender, took pot shots at the celebrating crowds. German POWs were driven around the city to quell the snipers. Some were sent off with a less than friendly pat on the head. On August 25, 1944, the French army was officially given the honor of marching into Paris first, with Charles de Gaulle leading the way. Parisians went wild. For them, the war was over. But for the Allies, there were still many miles between Paris and Berlin, and America was still fighting the Japanese on a second front on the other side of the world. <laughs>